Disclaimer, I and my YouTube channel in no way takes any responsibility for anything that you take from this video or any of the other videos in my uh, YouTube channel. Um, this is about the agreements and snow removal. Shut up, chicken. So take it for what it's worth. Make sure you see legal aid. And uh, I'm just doing this for free, so enjoy. Hello and welcome to a serious topic that everyone on Facebook and other uh, forums are asking about. Show me your contract. You know, when people post or private message me asking, you know, can someone give me a contract or can someone show me uh, what their contract is, I think what people are forgetting is that we have spent a lot of money and several years changing and adapting our contract. Some people have been talking to lawyers and getting them proofread. Um, it's, that's not cheap. So to just be asking people for their contract or even saying, oh, well, I'll buy you a beer or, or I'll give you a hundred bucks or 200 bucks, that doesn't even come close to the amount of work and effort that, uh, that people have put into their contracts. So I think people that are coming out and just asking, I mean, there are sites out there that, uh, that do have kind of a blanket contract, but it is very, very minimal and vague. I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do. I really wanna help everyone with trying to provide uh, some sort of a blanket contract, but at the same time, um, it's really hard to give that up and give it away because of the amount of time, energy, and money spent on making these contracts. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm just gonna talk about some things that people really don't think about. Uh, and a lot of people don't think about I mean shoot there's some people that have posted uh, just today I saw one and, and a guy said what do you think about this contract and it was for residential and essentially he had a uh, on-call price a uh, per service price and a seasonal price and then he had triggers of different lengths or sort of di different depths and it just became very very confusing um, as far as I'm concerned uh, well <laughs> let me just touch base it only talked about rates. It didn't talk about anything else. It didn't talk about any late payments that that was missing. It didn't have any information on there uh, for people to fill out so that you knew where to send the emails to or anything like that. Um, but it was only talking about the money side of things. It did not talk about what was more important and what everyone on here needs to think about is that we're in a high risk uh, business. It's very high risk. The reason we're high risk is the reason our insurance is so high. So don't tell me that we're not high risk, we are. And because we're high risk, we have to have things in our contracts that's gonna protect us. So I'm gonna try and touch base on some things and some things are gonna be way out of left field as far as I'm concerned, people are gonna be like, what? But I'm gonna touch base on some things and this video is for you just to think about your contract, what do you have in it and how is it protecting you? Because that's what the contract's there for. So I'm kind of winging this guys, I don't really have any notes, um, but let's go over the first two most important things, indemnification clause and hold harmless clause. Do you even know what those are? I'm not going to go into depths, honestly, you can just Google indemnification clause or hold harmless clause, they are two different things. I'm going to try and provide the uh, definitions of them down below, but if you don't know what those are or, or have them on your contract, you need to add them, period. You need to protect yourself and that's what those those ones, the most important thing is. Um, but you also have to explain what you're protecting yourself from when you're when you're mentioning those. So you wanna mention that you're, you're not responsible for any slip and falls, injuries, death, damage to property, anything. You name it all because let's face it guys, we're in, we're in, a, we're in a business where people are gonna, when they slip and fall, they wanna try and blame someone. And as far as I'm concerned, that's not really fair. It's winter, there's snow or ice on the ground. We are trying our best to make sure that we are providing a less slippery condition. There's no snow company out there that can keep a site completely snow or ice free. It's impossible. I mean, just the fact that we have a two inch trigger means snow will accumulate before we show up. So therefore, during that time, before the two inches, the minimum amount happens and, and we show up, What's preventing someone from slipping and falling? And then it's gonna be our fault? Nah, it's not gonna be our fault. People have to understand that there is uh, a risk in winter, period. We are a safeguard and we are there to help prevent 
a situation from happening. And in the event that a situation does happen and everyone gets pulled into uh, some sort of a, an injury lawsuit, the companies that have hired a professional snow removal business are ahead of the game because they have put something in place to help prevent so they're not being negligent. That's, that's why we're being hired. We're not being hired to move snow around. Like, that's not what we're hired for. We're being hired to prevent people from slipping and falling. That's exactly what we're in right now. A couple other things that you want to mention on there is you want to mention that you're not responsible for any man-placed snow or water or ice. What that means, and you can go as, in as detailed as you want, I'm definitely very detailed in my um, agreements, but what that means is that if you come and clear the snow from a snowfall, and then someone decides to shovel snow onto the common roadway, you're not responsible for that. Yes, you'll come back and clean it, and yes, you should be building them something, but you're not responsible for that. For us, where we are at, we have a lot of days, we're in a very wet, moist climate, but we have a lot of days where we do have to salt on dry nights. I know that in the East and Central uh, America, <laughs> you guys don't experience this, you guys don't do it, and you shake your head. We are in a rainforest on the West Coast, it's a completely different animal. We will have frost or ice forming on the ground in uh, up to positive two in all honesty. However, most contracts are stipulated that we salt at a zero temperature, zero Celsius or colder. But if someone was, we, we, we have, a, we have in, in our agreement that you're not allowed to wash your cars on the property. So if it's a strata or a row home, you're not allowed to wash your cars on your properties, period, between the months of November 1st to April 1st. So uh, that is there because in the winter months, the cars get grimy, People come home, they want their cars nice and shiny, and that's fine, but then they wash their cars in the evening after work, and it freezes. So we have it in our agreements, not allowed. You're not allowed to wash your cars on your property between these months. We have it in our contracts that we're not responsible for any um, snow or ice or water runoff from roofs or gutters or overflows, uh, downspouts. Um, sometimes downspouts are, are, are pointing onto the roadways. That's something that you guys gotta watch for before you're even bid on a site, because then honestly, I'll, I'll try and add some pictures or a video here of a site that I took on without catching these downspouts uh, spitting out onto the roadways. All of our sites were fine, except for this one site. We kept on getting calls that it's icy, it's icy. It wasn't until the third, uh, second call that when I did a site visit to check it, uh, we realized what was going on and we just told them like, this isn't our responsibility, like we'll do it, but you're gonna be pretty unhappy when the bill keeps coming in because we're gonna have to salt you every single day that it gets positive during the day, the snow melts from the roof, and then it freezes at night and it freezes on the road because the gutters are spinning out on the roadway. You can see the ice dripping from it and it drains down and it comes right, oops, it comes right down, you can see it coming to the middle of the road. So the whole complex is gonna have some draining issues from, there's another downspout here with a pile of snow and it's gonna be draining down there. So there's another downspout there. And the same thing, it's just draining into the middle. So we can combat this as much as possible, but I gotta be honest with you, all our sites, are bone dry and clear. Um, this site is not. So it looks like this is gonna be a constant issue. We're not responsible for water drainage um, and freezing. So again, nothing down there, but uh, something to consider. The video is not done yet. I'm still gonna go over several points, but if you're still watching, why don't you do yourself a favor and like the video, subscribe to my channel. That way you get notified of new videos that I'm gonna do to try and help you in the snow removal industry. Here's some more tips for your contracts. So these are things you have to think about. You have to word it. What else do I have in the, uh, in the agreements? We're not responsible for kids um, playing in snowbanks. Um, we, we advise people not to have kids playing in snowbanks because that's a quick way that uh, children are gonna get killed. So a couple other things that you might not, um, not think about is you wanna have an act of God. I mean, heck, our insurance has act of God uh, stipulations or rules. That means, hey, we're not responsible for that. So what if it were to snow uh, two feet in one night? You know, like this is this is where highways are gonna get shut down, bridges are gonna get shut down. Um, freezing storms, do you guys have a, a certain write-up uh, about response times during freezing storms? Because you can't drive around in freezing storms um, or ice storms, sorry. 
Uh, it's something that you guys have to be careful for before you send out the trucks. You have to make sure, and, and salting in free, uh, ice storms is pretty much useless as well. Yes, you can use sand, but depending on where you are, uh, for us for instance, good luck finding any dry sand that isn't frozen rock solid in the winter. There is no one in the lower mainland or sorry, west coast that, uh, that stores sand in a dry location. So this is stuff that you have to think about. Is it even available? You got to think about uh, like, for instance, COVID. We have a, a COVID clause. Um, you can't be responsible. Like, th there's things in life that can happen that's completely out of your, your realm or control. If your whole staff fall ill of COVID, uh, what are you going to do? Like, there's nothing, there's nothing really you can do. Okay, well, you know, some people are going to be like, oh, well, I'll find other staff. Okay, that's great. But what if you can't? Like, what if you can't? And it's strictly because of a, a world phenomenon virus or, or anything. So it, it could be anything. So um, state of emergencies. Do you have any clauses or, or anything that's put down, any points um, that's put down as far as a state of emergency of any kind and how that's going to affect your response time or anything like that? You do not know what's going to happen. You do not know how silly it's going to be that people expect you to still do something when a state of emergency is happening. So these are things that, that you have to think about that I guarantee you a lot of people that are watching this video already are kind of like taken back and like, this is silly. You don't have to have that. No, that's what an agreement is. An agreement is there to really cover the stuff that's coming way out of left field. Yes, it's going to be talking about what your obligations are strictly uh, for salting and snow removal. When are you servicing the rates? Uh, where you're servicing, you want to include all the areas in great detail. You don't want to just say all pathways when you're not doing all pathways or some pathways. You want to say where the pathways are um, and stuff like that. But but that's what an agreement is for. Agreement is there to really help um, uh, protect you. A cancellation clause, this can be a whole other video. Some people don't have a cancellation clause. Some people do. Uh, I do. Uh, I think I was... I'm not going to say I was the first, but I was one of the first ones that I, uh, out of all the snow removal companies that I've talked to that implemented one, because I'm not going to, uh, we run a very conservative snow removal business and we've been full for the last three years. And I'm not going to take on someone uh, as a client that is going to try and leave me halfway through the season or the last month of the season. I don't want those people. And if you're going to try and leave me, you're going to have a cancellation clause of a couple thousand dollars at minimum in all honesty. So, so this is something that you want to have in, in, in place to get to again, protect you, but it's worded in such a way that I can cancel with anyone at any time. There's no fees. There's no responsibilities. So if you have the nightmare cu customer and they're just, uh, expectations are completely unreal. They're telling you that, you know, they're trying to change it and saying that you're servicing, uh, you know, too much when you're not, I mean, there's don't get me wrong. There's companies out there that are that over service, but there's there. Everyone has experienced these nightmare customers, and you're literally pulling your hair out because every time you do something, it's either not quick enough, or why did you do it? Those those clients, you just warn them, and you 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 send them a copy of the agreement in the, in that section, and just say, hey, like if you don't like our services, by all means, you can cancel at any time. But please understand that I am more than willing to have a meeting with you guys, with Strata, with the property manager, and go over again with just what we're doing and why we're doing it. But if this keeps up, we'll just drop you in the middle of the season and good luck finding someone else. And if you do find someone else, you can guarantee, you can guarantee that the rates are gonna be a lot higher. So a cancellation clause of some kind is really important to have as well. And this is another one that's really here to really help protect you. Um, something that I have in my agreement is that in the event that a situation, an incident happens specifically or more specifically regarding any form of injury to someone, um, a slip and fall of some kind, uh, it is, it is mandatory that we find, we are notified of it. I think it's within two hours of, of them finding out about it. We also have it worded that we have the rights to any videos or pictures of any kind that the incident may be recorded with. We also have it worded that for up to three years after the incident, the the cut the client, the strata, the strata management company will respond will communicate and respond to the snow removal company or its representative 
in a timely manner. Now you can't really say that, hey, you have to respond within a day or two hours or whatever, but within a timely manner. I, I, I don't have it in front of me. I'm not gonna read it word for word. Cause again, I, I think what I'm giving here is very valuable, but I'm not gonna spoon feed. I'm not gonna give you paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. But this is really important because a lawsuit, uh, if someone were to slip and fall, and if you do get uh, pulled into it, a lawsuit, uh, usually you have to serve someone within two years and it could take two years to, to drag out. So we just put it for three years because essentially by the time you get sued, you're gonna, you're gonna have this information. But if you didn't, if you didn't uh, the statute of limitations, if you didn't get served for two years, but the other company knew about this for two years and they've been building a case against you and stuff, then because I have in my agreement that you have to let us know within two hours of knowing of uh, an incident, they, they, they essentially could gain two uh, two years of not letting us know and not allowing us to gain any um, additional information. I mean, shoot, if a slip and fall were to happen, I would have a truck on site taking pictures of the site immediately within an hour or less, depending on location. But if you don't have something worded that, that um, says, hey, if something happens, you have to communicate with us, you might not hear about a slip and fall until two years later. And then you're just like, what the heck? Like, well, I have before and after pictures of, you know, of my services, because that's what my staff do. Uh, they're all time stamped and GPS stamped, and that's great, that's gonna help. But what if the slip and fall happened just before you showed up on a two inch trigger? Are you liable? Not, definitely not. I mean, shoot, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reiterate, I don't think you're liable for any slip and falls in the, in the winter. Uh, show me one uh, lawsuit over a sunburn, it just doesn't exist. But these, these, these clauses or, um, addendums uh, that you're gonna have to throw out to these agreements. Um, you have to, if you're gonna add anything to an agreement that you already have, it's now an addendum and it forms part of the agreement that you already have. So so if, you, if you're liking any of the stuff that I'm saying and you're like, holy crap, yeah, I really wanna add some of this stuff. If you're gonna be adding it to any of the contracts that you already have, you have to say, hey, we have to get an addendum signed and all these points uh, form part of the agreement. So this is all something that like as a business owner, um, you might not want to know the the legal side of things, and and being in Canada uh, and being in British Columbia, it's going to be a little bit different than the rest of Canada and the rest of the United States. But for the most part, a lot of it is the same. Uh, a lot of it is there to try and protect you. You and the laws are written in such a way that yes, there's going to be some idiosyncrasies that you have to follow as per your state or country but you just want to protect yourself. We even go as far as having a disruption fee, which means if we are servicing a, a client, all of our stuff is man managed by us. We make the decisions when we go and everything like that. But if a customer or client calls us about a site that we're, we're responsible for and they're saying, hey, you know, why aren't you here? Or, hey, uh, this could have been done differently. If, if we show up, and do anything or not, there's gonna be a charge for that. Now, don't get me wrong, if we completely forgot something, which doesn't happen, but if we for completely forgot something, then yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do it and it's not gonna be part of the charge. But if it's something that they're like, hey, this pile needs to be moved, but it's the only place that the pile can go and it's not impacting, you know, fire um, lanes or parking, um, it's taking up maybe a visitor's spot or something like that, then no, we're not gonna move the, the pile. We, we're gonna assess it. And that client may be susceptible to a inconvenience charge or a, a disruption fee. So, so, so these are things that you just have to like, we're not working for free um, out there. The, yes, you can go out and do some things. And yes, we do go out and do some things for free, but you wanna make sure that things are written down in such a way in your contract that if you do start ever having these problem clients, the problem complexes, you can start billing them for it. And if they don't start liking it, they're gonna start taking the hint that, hey, I'm gonna have to shut up because every time I tell them to come out, they're billing me for something and they're not even doing anything. Or, you know, like everyone everyone laughs um, when you're, you got your staff, you know, multiple trucks out plowing multiple sites and you get the email or, or text, hey, where are you? Our site has snow. I'm like, well, yeah, like every every site has snow. Like, give give us a break. It's still snowing, so even if we plowed it right now, 
you're probably going to end up with snow again. Um, it's just something that uh, it's kind of the going joke in the snow removal industry, and you just kind of you, you kind of have to be candid and you kind of have to be um, polite when talking to them. But you should have rules in your agreement that's going to help protect you. So I know this isn't what a lot of people want or wanted to hear. I mean, people would love to hear at the end of this that, hey, click below and you'll get a copy of a, an agreement. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not ready to show my um, show my cards. I'm not ready to, to give that up just yet. Uh, there may come a time that I will, there may come a time that I'm gonna collaborate with some other snow removal businesses and then we will make this blanket one that is good for people to, to use and a good start. But just be careful out there. Again, there's a lot of agreements out there that they're very vague. They're very vague. Um, I think my agreement uh, is seven pages long. That's not the longest that I've heard. I've heard of some that are 10. In short, if your agreement is not saying that you can take their firstborn, uh, take all their money and um, push people as you're you know, plowing, uh, then you're not really protecting yourself. Now, don't get me wrong, no one's gonna be doing that. That's not what we're saying that uh, that's gonna happen. But you can't be responsible in this industry and you can't remotely say you're responsible in this industry for anything. Again, if you think this is far-fetched and no one's gonna sign these agreements, um, if in your area people have just very generic agreements and they're not, uh, they're not written very well, then yeah, there, you might get some pushback uh, for the first little bit. But it's it's... It's something that you really got to network with your competition. You got to have those nights at the bar where you invite some of those guys. And trust me, like people, they won't really talk at first. They won't really share numbers. They won't do this. They won't say that. But as you get to know some of these contractors and you talk to them in depth about snow removal and, you know, what you do or, hey, like, how do you do this? Or, you know, I've got this uh, kind of on my contract, but... Uh, I'm kind of thinking about wording it differently. It kind of puts that, that light on in their head that you know, they either don't have that at all and they're like, what the heck are you talking about? And sometimes it's, it's a little give before you take, uh, you, you know, um, or they say, oh yeah, like I got that, but uh, yeah, mine's like freaking a paragraph. Yours is one sentence. Like this is, this is how mine's read. So they may not hand over the whole agreement or contract, but you'll be able to network with them. You'll be able to talk to them. Um, I mean, I, uh, those that know me, uh, know that I bid against uh, tons of people uh, that I know and I network with and oftentimes after we submit the bids we'll be like so what'd you do what'd you what'd you put the numbers in for and there's not everyone and we're definitely not price fixing because we're not going over numbers beforehand but after we submit the bids we're just like so what'd you what'd you throw the number in at and sometimes you know the other guys like what the heck you're silly like why would you do it for that price or I'm saying the same thing or we laugh and we're like within you know, fifty dollars of each other, and and we're valuing our business as such, uh, such a way that um, that we're you know, and honestly, it's a coin flip who's going to get it. Well, I hope this helps you with uh, writing a contract. I know it's not the whole thing, but please take what you can and use it as you will. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much.